Hey guys, it's Caleb. welcome back. Have you ever seen a fruit quite like this? Or even like this? These are called bitter melons or bitter gourds, and they go by a bunch of other names as well, depending on where you're from. Where I live though, these aren't very common at all, so I'm really excited to bring you along today on this journey of growing them from seed right through to harvest, including every stage of the growing process, right through to experiencing some of the unique flavors and textures of these pretty incredible vegetables, or fruits, depending on who you ask. So let's get started by planting some of the seeds, and then together we can discover some of the amazing wonders of these plants and fruits and what they have to offer. So these are the seeds, which are quite interesting looking, with kind of a grooved, sculptured surface, almost like a piece of petrified wood or a fossil. I'm growing an Indian variety of bitter melon, which has a distinct warty looking exterior, and they're much more ridged than the Chinese variety, but there are many more types of bitter melon grown in different parts of the world. So now we've got the seeds planted in some seed raising mix, I'll give them some water, and I'll just keep them indoors in a nice warm spot until they've sprouted. So the seedlings are now three weeks old and looking good, so it's time to transplant them outside into the ground. Because these are a climbing vine, they need something to grow up against, so I've got some bamboo which I'm just hitting into the ground with a waratah rammer, and that way I can make a stable trellis for them to grow up. I've chosen a good sunny location as well, since these do best with at least six hours of sun a day, ideally a bit more. I've got some rope here which I'm weaving between the bamboo poles and I'll see how I go but I'd like to end up making a bamboo roof for the structure as well to increase the growing space and create an archway to walk through and allow plants to hang down overhead. But I might build that at a later stage. So to plant the bitter melons I'm first removing the grass and the weeds then just loosening the soil up a bit and I'm adding in a bit of dried sheep manure and some compost and I'll just mix that through to create a nice well-drained soil that's rich in organic matter, which should hopefully help these plants to thrive. To reduce any transplant shock, it's good to water your seedlings first and just avoid disturbing the roots as much as possible. So I'll get this guy down into the ground and firm that down nicely. And I'm adding this branch to give the plant something to grow up and reach the trellis above. Since we're going into the summer, I'm also adding a decent layer of straw mulch just to protect the soil and help to retain the moisture. Although these plants have had good amounts of light, they have been growing indoors and haven't really adjusted to being in the full sun outdoors yet. So I'm just going to put some shade cloth over these just to help them adjust more slowly rather than getting fully scorched by the sun. So I'll leave this up for about a week, but that's pretty much it for the planting. We'll keep an eye on these and see how they go. So after another three weeks, the plants have adjusted and they're climbing up the branches onto the trellis and I thought I'd give them a bit of a boost with some seaweed fertilizer just to improve the soil and promote a bit more healthy growth. So we're in mid-summer now and it's about a month since the last update and the vines are reaching up towards the top though they're not really as vigorous as I had expected. In ideal conditions these can grow really rapidly and easily take over an area. There could be a few reasons why they haven't been as vigorous as they can be, and one of them is that they have been getting pretty smashed around by the wind since they're in a fairly exposed spot, and they may also just be lacking a bit of the warmth and the humidity that they prefer as a heat-loving plant. But either way, what is cool is that we're getting flowers forming now, and they do have distinct male and female flowers. The female flowers are easy to tell apart as you can see the ovary at the base which just looks like a tiny bit of melon and it's what will form into the fruit if it's pollinated by the male flower. The male flowers tend to be the first flowers that form and they have these long thin stalks with no ovary at the base of the flower. The flowers also have a very obvious cup shaped bract about halfway down the stem which seems really interesting to me. So if you didn't know, a bract is basically a specialized leaf structure associated with a flower, 
and they're found in many different shapes and sizes and they serve different types of functions depending on the species of plant. For example, these poinsettia plants have these bright red bracts or modified leaves that attract pollinators to the small flowers in the centre. There's also this really cool species of passion fruit which have bracts that exude a sticky substance that has digestive enzymes in it and that traps insects and minimises predation on the young flowers and fruits. Another amazing example is this plant from the Cuban rainforest which has evolved dish shaped signalling bracts and those bounce back strong audible echoes to nectar feeding bats through echolocation and that allows the bats to increase their foraging efficiency and more easily find the flowers. I'm not really sure how the bract benefits the bitter melon flowers, whether it protects and supports the flower as it develops or maybe helps to direct pollinators to it, but either way it's quite an obvious and interesting feature to look out for. At this stage I've decided to give the plants some organic liquid fertilizer to keep them going strong and soon we should start to see some fruits forming. Alright guys, check these out. We have some little fruits forming and these just look so unique and quite amazing really with all the little bumps and ridges all over them. But I love having unusual weird looking stuff growing in my garden. It always makes things a little bit more fun for me and cool when you're showing people around as well. It is time to harvest the bitter melons and most of them have grown to a nice size now and they're looking pretty cool. So we just want to harvest these green ones here. And you'll notice some of the fruits have actually gone a little too far and they've become orange, which is when the fruits are fully ripe. But that's past the point that these are usually harvested and I just didn't get to them in time. We'll talk more about the orange fruits in a bit though because we can still use parts of them and they look pretty incredible, especially on the inside. But let's first just pick some of these green fruits, cook them up and see how they taste. So this is my first time cooking and eating bitter melons. So I've just found a simple recipe online that I'm going to try out and I'll link that down below. So when you cut these in half, you'll find this spongy stuff inside and that's supposed to be really bitter. So I'm just scraping that out and then cutting it into like half moon shapes fairly thinly. One of the things that you can do to reduce the bitterness of these is just to sprinkle some salt over them and just mix that around a little bit and that's going to help to draw out some of the moisture and bitterness and I'll just let that sit for around 20 minutes. I'm going to try this raw and I don't think it's going to be very good but people do eat it raw and juiced for medicinal reasons. It's used as a herbal medicine for things like diabetes and a bunch of other stuff so kind of interesting but um, let's see how bitter it is. Oh. <laughs> Holy, it's definitely pretty bitter. It does have a good like crunch and a pretty nice texture, but man, that bitterness is just intense. So it's been about 20 minutes, so I can squeeze out some of the excess moisture now, and there's quite a bit coming out. And I'll just give them a bit of a rinse, get that salt off them. And I'm just going to stir fry these with a bit of garlic and chilli just to add some nice flavours to it. Just mixing that around for a few minutes until it's slightly tender. And I'm adding a little more salt as well since we rinsed most of it off earlier. And that salty flavour can also help to cut down on the bitterness as well. Alright, here goes. Not quite sure what I think of that. It's pretty intensely flavoured. I haven't really experienced bitter vegetables before and I think I actually don't mind it. The flavours on it are really nice, like the garlic and the chilli and a bit of salt on that. It's nowhere near as bitter as it was when it was just raw, so it's definitely reduced but it's still quite bitter and quite a shock for someone who hasn't really tried bitter vegetables before. So. You know, in terms of if you would like it or not, I think it's something that you would kind of have to try to know. I think it's something definitely you do have to get used to. Probably if you mix it in with some other types of foods and other meals, so it's not just a standalone thing, it would probably be a bit less intense than this. Either way, interesting, I always like to try unusual flavours and unusual foods. But yeah, don't hate me if you don't like it. Going back to the orange bitter melons, I have seen some people who eat the orange flesh at this stage, but what I find especially cool about these is the inside of them. As they continue to get more ripe, they split open at the bottom, exposing the seeds which are surrounded in arils, which is this beautiful bright red flesh. It almost looks like little lollies or little kidney beans or something, it's really bizarre. 
With them splitting open on their own, I guess it would allow them to fall out or be eaten by birds and other animals, which would then disperse the seeds. But they look quite tasty, especially when you don't leave them on there for too long. Basically, you just eat the red stuff just around the seeds. It does look like my hands are covered in tomato sauce with a chili bean there, but let's give it a try. And just a quick note, although I have found studies talking about the red arils being edible and seen plenty of people eating them as well, some sources have said that they've been reported to be toxic to children. So just keep that in mind and I'll link those resources down below. Yeah, so it's quite sort of jelly-like. It's fleshy, but also falls apart and is quite watery as well. It's got a nice sweetness to it. I'd say it doesn't really have anything that's a unique flavor. It's just like kind of sweet juiciness. It's actually kind of nice. I think if you sort of suck on the seed after eating the flesh around it, the seed is a little bit bitter. But if you just kind of get rid of the seed straight away, then it's just a nice, sweet, fleshy fruit. Hmm. As well as being tasty though, the red arils are an extraordinarily high source of a powerful antioxidant called lycopene, which gives them their red color. They also contain high levels of polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are not only important for heart health and regulating inflammation, but they can also help to increase the absorption of the many antioxidants that these contain, helping to protect your cells from damage and support overall health. Hmm, very interesting. There really is so much more to say about these plants and fruits, like even in traditional medicine, how every part of the plant has been used from the fruits to the seeds, the leaves, and even the roots. So they're pretty amazing, but I hope this has at least been an interesting overview of bitter melons and given you some idea if you wanna have a go growing them or not. But if you wanna see me grow some other fruits, feel free to check out these videos over here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.